project folder open, click Introduction, Fill in Stroke Effects, Versions, and select the version of Illustrator you're using. In my case, it's CC, and open the Fill and Stroke Effects file, and you should have something that looks like this. Now, we are going to be covering a lot in this video, and in quite some depth. If you wish to skip ahead to any point in the video or back, you can do so quite simply. The topics covered in this video are listed in the description along with their times, so be sure to check that out. So let's zoom in to take a closer look. Here you can see some fill and stroke examples which I have prepared to demonstrate some of the basics. Here we have a vector with a fill and stroke, just a fill and just a stroke. Vector shapes in Illustrator can have either a fill colour or a stroke colour or both. As a beginner, it helps to understand how this works so you can control your artwork. So, our first example on the far left here is a vector example with both a stroke and a fill colour applied. If we select this vector with the selection tool and look closely at the bottom of the tools menu, we can see what's applied. And we can see the fill colour, the top square is yellow, and the stroke colour, the outline square behind, is blue. We can also see the colours applied up here in the top control panel along with the stroke size and profile and brush definition. If we continue to look closely at the colours at the bottom of the menu panel, just above the coloured squares is a button that looks like a double-ended arrow. This is the swap fill and stroke button. If we click this, we can swap the colours like so. Sometimes you may accidentally change the stroke colour with the intent on changing the fill. So if this ever happens, you can simply press the swap button. So let's now move on to the next example. I'm going to select this vector with the selection tool. Once this is selected, look again at the bottom of the tools menu. This time we can see that only a fill is applied and no stroke. Now we know this because the background stroke square has a red dash going through it. A red dash means transparency or no colour applied. And just like earlier, with the vector selected, if we click the swap fill and stroke button, we have converted this vector object from a fill to a stroke. I'm just going to click off this shape as I want to demonstrate something real quick. So keep in mind that this vector was originally a solid yellow fill and we just changed it to a stroke. So now this vector is just a stroke and has no fill colour. Now watch this. With my selection tool I'm going to attempt to select my vector shape. So I'm going to move my mouse cursor into the middle and click and I'm clicking multiple times yet the shape is not selecting. Now this is because there is nothing to select. The shape is empty so remember, when you have a vector that is just an outline, you have to be careful to move your mouse cursor over the actual stroke and then click to select the object like so. Or you could click and drag a selection over the shape like so and release to select it. When selected, I'm going to swap that back to a fill by pressing the swap fill and stroke button. So moving on to the next example, by now, you should already be familiar with a vector with just a stroke. With the selection tool, I'm carefully going to select the stroke, and in the tools menu, we can confirm that this vector shape contains no fill, as the fill square is showing a red dash. To modify the size of the stroke is quite simple. So we currently have this vector selected. If we look up on the control panel to the top left, we can see that the current stroke size is 4 points. If we press up or down on the toggle buttons, we can push the size up or down like so. Or we can even type in our own value. We can also see the stroke value if we look in the stroke panel. I'm going to come across and click on my stroke panel, though if you cannot see yours, you can come to window, scroll down and select the stroke panel from there. And at the top, we have our stroke weight. And here we can change this back to four points. Nice. So the fill and stroke squares in the tools menu is something to really pay attention to if you are a beginner. Once you get your head around this, you will find using fill and stroke effects very easy. Next, we are going to move down and look at alignment of strokes. So, we now know that every vector is created out of anchor points. 
and if vectors have curves, then the anchors will also contain handles. So all the anchors and handles add up to create a path, an outline of the vector. We have just looked at how a vector can have a fill or a stroke applied. In Illustrator, you can also tweak the stroke to behave differently on an outline. And that's what we are about to cover, and here are three examples of this. In Illustrator, the stroke can either align to the center of an outline, the inside of an outline, or the outside of an outline. So with the direct selection tool, I'm going to draw an area over these three squares and release to reveal the anchor points. If we look closely, we can see that these three square examples are the exact same size, but if you notice very carefully, you can see they appear very slightly different in size. That's because each stroke is aligned differently. So let's take a closer look. On the first square, we can see the stroke is aligned to the centre. We can see our vector outline running through the centre of the vector stroke. If we look over to the next square, we can see our vector outline is on the outside of the vector stroke. And this is because the stroke on this vector is aligned on the inside. Now, if we look over to the last example, this time we can see the outline of the vector is along the inside. And this is because the vector stroke is aligned to the outside. So I'm just going to select the first example with the selection tool. Now, to change the alignment of the stroke on a vector, you, you need to reveal your stroke panel. I'm going to come across and click on my stroke panel, though if you cannot see yours, you can come to window and scroll down and select stroke. Now, if we look carefully in the stroke panel, we can see some boxes. On the bottom row, we have the align stroke options. As you can see, the align stroke to center button is currently clicked. If I come over to the next and click this, notice how my stroke now changes. Now it's aligned to the inside. I'll just click back again and align center so you can see it changing. Then, if I come to the third button and press this, my stroke is now aligned to the outside. Now notice how the stroke changes as we click on these buttons. So that is one to keep in mind for when you create your artwork, as you can get various different outcomes with different stroke alignments. So in the stroke panel, you will also notice we have a corner option. Now, if we scroll down on our document, you will see another set of examples here. Now, these examples are displaying the various stroke corner effects you can achieve. In Illustrator, we have three options, which we can choose from the stroke panel. You can use the default, meter join, you can use the round join or bevel join. To activate these, simply click on your vector shape and click on one of the icons in the stroke panel to apply it. These can also be used to achieve different outcomes on your artwork should they benefit your design. Next, I want to demonstrate the dash feature. In Illustrator, you can add dash effects to your strokes, which can be customized quite extensively. As you can see here, I have two examples. If I select the first example with the selection tool, we can see the properties in the stroke panel. We can see the dash option is checked with the dash set to 12 points. Let's change this to 6 points and see what happens. As you can see, by altering the dash value, we can increase or decrease the dashes on our stroke. The next example, however, is a little different. Here we have the dash value set to 0, but this time with a gap of 15 points. Applied to the stroke, I have chosen the round cap, and this creates the effect of dots. Also, I have made sure to click the align dashes to corner ends button. This makes for a better looking dashed stroke. So be sure to play around with these options to see what effects you can get. Finally, we have the stroke end options. In Illustrator, we can add a range of arrowheads to strokes. If I select the first line, we can see that this stroke has an arrowhead on the start point. In the strokes panel, we can swap this like so by clicking on the swap button and choose another arrowhead for a wide range of options. If I select the last stroke, we can see that this has an arrowhead at both ends. You can also change the scale of the arrowhead by entering custom values. So one arrowhead can be smaller than the other. 
So that is an overview of some fill and stroke effects in Adobe Illustrator. Be sure to take a closer look at these options to bring yourself up to speed. In the next video, we are going to move on to colour, where I will be demonstrating some interesting colour effects and tools here in Adobe Illustrator. So see you in the next video.